So we're glad that you could join us and uh, want to talk a little bit about the story. We talked about Officer Greg Anderson yesterday. He's the police officer who was suspended after making a video saying that officers should not enforce governor's stay at home order. Uh, so I want to play you this video. He did it in uniform, and then he's going to be joining us here. This is Greg Anderson's video that got him in a little bit of trouble. Have a listen to this. If you're part of a department or an agency that is asking people or asking their officers or their deputies to impose on people's rights and infringe on their, their, their freedoms, you need to step up and say no. And if that costs you your job, so be it. I've already expressed this to my department. And, and luckily for me, I come from a department that I feel like my chain of command shares my view. All right. Well, that is Officer Greg Anderson, and he's very nice enough uh, to join us right now on the line. Uh, Officer Anderson, thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Appreciate you taking some time to join us. Let me start by asking you this. Uh, did they give you a reason why they suspended you? What was the exact reason? Because as you said, there's a lot of people in your department that support your opinions. So my question is, why did they suspend you, and what was the reason? Well, initially, they said that the reason that I got suspended was because I violated the social media policy. And then due to a violation of the social media policy, they said that I needed to remove the post, which I refused to do. So they're moving forward with an insubordination charge. But I think everybody involved understands that it's bigger than that. And it was about the message. It wasn't about a social media post violation because past practices, officers, every day violate that policy and there's never been any repercussions sure. or any investigations looking into that so basically they were just making an excuse and i think they're my my and i don't have any factual data to support this but i'm suspecting somewhere above my agency got a hold of them and said hey you need to stop this right now and right. they dug through the policy and found something that they could attach it to to have me remove it all right, so Greg, right. let me ask you this. This is my opinion. You, you know, maybe you'll agree, maybe you'll disagree with me on what you did, and, and this is my opinion. I could be wrong. I believe that if you, uh, I don't have anything, I don't feel, uh, you know, any anger, or I don't think your opinion. You have the right to your opinion. That's what I'm trying to say. However, here's where I think you made a mistake. And again, you could tell me if you disagree or not. You did it in uniform while on the job. For example, if you went home, got out of uniform, were wearing shorts and a T-shirt. You weren't blasting anybody within your department, and you were just sharing the opinions that you have. I personally would have no problem with that. But I think that what got you in, in a little bit of heat is you were wearing the uniform and you were in your squad car. Do you understand where I'm going with that? Do you agree with that? Oh, and, and, and you're absolutely right, except, I mean, I didn't blast anyone in my department. Right, right. I understand. Right. But, no, I understand. Well, let, yeah. me let, let, me, let me tell you this. I have worked as a law enforcement officer in Los Angeles. And now in Seattle for coming up on 10 years, I have friends all over the country that are in law enforcement. And literally every single person that I talk to, 100 percent of them cannot believe what is taking place across this country. And they all say the same thing that I say. There's no way that I would arrest someone for cutting hair. There's no way that I would go after a surfer. And when every single person I talk to shares that belief, I felt it was necessary for one of our own to speak out against it. As a, as a law enforcement officer, it was necessary to police our own and send that message to our own coming from us. And I sure. think we all know that if I made that video in my backyard in a pair of shorts, it wouldn't have resonated the same way it resonated across the country. Right. It, it, would, it wouldn't have been as effective. I agree I, with that. I understand your frustration. I think we all are frustrated. But I guess I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here again just, just for the sake of it. And, and this is probably what I believe. You're a hero. I believe police officers are heroes because they risk their lives to protect and serve every day. I respect what you do a great deal, sir. Let me just be very clear on that. With that being said, and I don't mean any disrespect, officer, by saying this, you're not a doctor and you're not a scientist. You can believe something and you're entitled to your opinion, but I would rather take the opinions of a bunch of doctors and scientists than take the opinion of a bunch of police officers. And again, no disrespect. I believe you guys are heroes. Do you understand where I'm going with that? I would rather our doctors and no. the governors. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if you listen to my video very carefully, I didn't touch on any of the scientific data of the coronavirus. OK, I didn't talk about the validity of it, how dangerous it is, what procedures we should be in. Like, I didn't go into any of that for the reasons that you just said. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. But what I am is someone who's sworn to uphold the oath and uphold the Constitution. And regardless of the science, 
I don't care if this is Ebola. I don't, as a law enforcement officer, get to go infringe on people's liberties that are not sick, okay? Quarantine laws do exist, and let me explain this to you guys. There's quarantine laws both on the state level and the federal level that address sick people. So, for instance, me working at the Port of Seattle. If we got information that a person was flying in from Africa confirmed to have Ebola, we could detain that person. We could deprive them of their freedom for the greater good of the community. But there are no laws in existence to deprive healthy people of their freedoms okay. because some governor or some mayor thinks that it's a necessary idea. All right, let me let me let me jump in on that. Uh on, you, you can infringe on people that are not sick. You do understand, officer, that there are a lot of people throughout the country that are asymptomatic. How do you know whether they're sick or not? You can't possibly, with all due respect, how do you know that? You could have someone that's cutting hair. You have no idea whether they have the virus or not because, as the scientists and doctors tell and say, there are plenty of people out there that are easily asymptomatic. While I understand what you're saying, you, you, you have to understand the fact that there are people out there and you have no idea whether they're sick or not they're not coughing they're not sneezing and they could easily spread the virus do you understand that listen uh, the virus is the virus okay and, and i go back to my last point regardless of how dangerous it is we don't have the authority to go out there and, and stop cars and stop and start looking for people to see if they have essential papers or not we don't have that authority now if if the government officials want to propose laws and legislate things and, and and make those laws, then then maybe at a later date that will be on the books. But I mean, Brian, now, we don't we don't get to do those things. You know, Brian, by that by that and logic, actually, there there should be police let, officers. Let Go ahead. Sorry, I could, sorry. Okay. So but by that logic, there should be police officers at the, the front entrance of every single grocery store nope. testing everybody who walks in. Nope. Those those who have the virus can can then be quarantined to some degree, to some capacity. Brian, if, if you just say that, okay, well, everyone could have this virus because of the, the possible asymptomatic cases, that that in itself is, is just a, a – a, a perfect opportunity to totally infringe on someone's civil liberties, uh, Brian. That, not, that's that's why this this virus is is so unique and so dangerous and so hard for for someone uh, like Officer Ander Anderson to handle. Because again, you can't just say, "Well, he could have the virus," so then that means that he doesn't get his civil um, liberties. Like like for example, what's going on in L.A. Mayor Garcetti two days ago said that if you don't leave your house, and that this is L.A. County is 10.8 million people. He said if you if you leave your house and you don't have your mask on you, you can be arrested. I can almost guarantee you, Officer Anderson, you, you would not follow through with that. Am I correct? 100 percent correct. OK, but let me just correct you, uh, 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 J.D. Supermarkets are actually open. There's no order in place. And by the way, most people that go into supermarkets are buying food. They're not going in there to get their nails done. They're not going in there for other services. There is a fine line between comparing supermarkets that are open and officers out there testing everybody in supermarkets who, who by the way, are supposed to be practicing social distance and somebody who is cutting hair or painting somebody's nails. But I'll go back to uh, – Officer Anderson here real quickly. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Officer Greg Anderson from the Port of Seattle Police, uh, and he put this video out. And uh, basically, uh, because of the video that he put out, at least according to police, uh, he put it out on social media. He was in uniform in his squad car uh, saying he will not uh, you know, arrest people and he will not do what the governor basically is telling all officers to do. He was suspended for that. Uh, officer, let me ask you this. Um, what have you heard from your department, uh, is it just going to be back at, to work as usual in a few weeks, or what are they telling you? Well, real quick, let's let's take a step back to you downplaying the importance of cutting hair, or doing nails. Maybe on at its surface, it doesn't look like an important service, but you have to remember that is how people are feeding their families. So, for for people that don't have a savings, which is the overwhelming majority of Americans. We don't get to infringe on their abilities to protect and feed their families, and I think that is why it's so frustrating. I would say that it's almost insulting on the American public that we need our government to protect us from something. I, I think that Americans are capable of looking at the situation, analyzing the, the data and the facts, and, and operating accordingly. Well, uh, here's why I would respectfully disagree with that. You see a lot of dumb people in society every day. You have to deal with these people every day. 
Uh, there are some people that are drinking Clorox because they listen to Donald Trump talking about injecting themselves. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make there is there's a lot of dumb people out there. So I disagree with you. I don't trust everybody out there in practicing social distance, number one. Number two, I understand that there are people out there that run businesses, whether it's painting nails or whether it's haircuts, to put food on the table. I, I totally understand that. But with that being said, there is unemployment and there are government programs out there to get these people by until things are allowed to open up again. I am not diminishing small business. What I am doing is saying that there is a fine line between a supermarket and buying food to customers walking into a nail salon or having an urge to get their hair cut. That's the only point I was trying to make there, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, and you're entitled to that. Mm -hmm. But as I see a lot of people in my community starting to lose their businesses – you know, all, all the government assistance and the unemployment, it's some, so it's working out for some people. Other people haven't seen a dime yet. So the system is not ready to impose this type of lockdown because exactly. people are going without. And, and if they can't fix that, then they shouldn't be doing this. So as a police but, officer. You know what, what, I mean, listen, I'm getting, I'm getting pulled into the medical side of it. And that is not where I, that, you know, that wasn't my point. I don't have the expertise to be able to speak to the medical side of this virus. Sure, and I My appreciate point was, that. Regardless yep. of it, regardless yep. of the danger, people's civil liberties have to be respected. So as a police officer, when you pull someone over for a DUI, you have to have probable cause. Now, in, in a situation like this with the virus, how do, you, how do you differentiate between probable cause with someone who is symptomatic or has the virus and sick and someone who is asymptomatic? And, and may have the virus. How does that work out as a police officer? What, what are they telling you? Well, there, when, when it first kicked off, we were told no traffic stops, period. Because if, a, if an officer stops 10 cars a day, then he's, you know, potentially transmitting that between a lot of different people. But uh, and, and like I said in my video, my department hasn't been enforcing any type of stops to look for papers. But it's happening out there. I have personal friends that have been stopped to see if they're essential personnel. And, I mean, it's, it's, there's case law supporting that, that stopping somebody is a Fourth Amendment violation because you're seizing that person. And so it, it falls under unreasonable search and seizure. And if you're stopping that person without some type of probable cause, you're not allowed to do that. It's as simple as that. That's law enforcement 101. You learn that at the academy the day you show up. I have and to so, – sorry to interrupt you, officer. I, I, I have to ask you this. When you come back – and I'm assuming you'll be back uh, sooner than later, and you're back on the streets, will you do another video like this? You know, will you do this again, or is it one of those situations where you're just going to, you know, uh, just say to yourself, all right, uh, I'm not going to do another video like this, but I'm not going to arrest anybody. Like, what is your thought process when you actually do come back and you're back in uniform? Well, as it stands right now, I'm going to be terminated over the video. That's what they're telling me. So there wow. won't be any more traffic stops from Officer Anderson. <laughs> How long have you been an officer for? By the way, I don't agree with that, by the way. I'm on your side. I do not believe you should lose your job for this. How, how, how long have you been an officer for? I've been with the port for three years, and then I was with a different agency for five years. And you don't, do you have any, any issues on your record? I mean, any, any is, I mean I, nope, I'm not trying to get personal here. but Absolutely none. I'm trying no, to paint. Absolutely yeah. none. Good. I've never I'm trying, been disciplined for anything. Right. And I'm trying to paint you as, as such, as an officer that's done a really good job. And, 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 and listen, I support you back on the streets. And, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to give you a hard time when, when it comes to this. But going back to the video, I, I think in most cases, if you're working for a company and you put something out on social media and they don't like it, I mean, I guess they, that's the – I mean, they can tell you not to do it, right? I mean, I guess they have the – they have the right to do that. Like I said, I think that's where you made your mistake. I don't have a problem with well, your opinions at all. But, but and I'll see, tell you this: that's gonna that's gonna have to be litigated at a at a later date because we do have a social media policy, and that policy talks about you cannot show your badge, you cannot show a patch or a hat that shows who you work for, you cannot reference the port. If you notice, my hat's turned around, my badge is out of the frame. All that was calculated. I did that on purpose because I didn't. I wanted my message to go out there from from a cop to another cop. And right. I wanted to keep the Port of Seattle out of it. And uh, I thought that I did a good job at that. They don't think that I did a good job at that. And uh, we'll just have to see where, where this, how this shakes out.
You know, officer, there's a lot of conversation that your your video is kind of rooted in in political interest. In in, in most cases, the people are thinking that that you are a Republican or you support Donald Trump. Was this video rooted in any political interest, or was it simply a matter of right and wrong for you? For me, it's a matter of right and wrong, and I feel like every single issue now has to be pulled into a left versus right realm. And that's why I was very – and, yes, I have political views. I'm not even going to get into those because that's not what this was about. Right. It, for me, it doesn't matter if you're right or if you're left. There's things that we can do as officers, and there's things that we cannot do, regardless of where you stand or regardless of what your personal beliefs are on them. Yep. And so that is why I was compelled to put this out there. And I'll tell you this. I've received tens of thousands. I mean we can't even begin to check the number of emails that have shown up in our inbox that are from officers, not only across the nation, across the world. We're getting hit up by Ireland and Canada and Australia. And they're all saying, wow, thank you for speaking out about this, because we don't want to be enforcing this stuff. This isn't part of our job, and we don't have the right to do that. So regardless of where you stand on this, personally, I can tell you law enforcement officers around the globe do not feel like we are the people that should be used as foot soldiers for these arbitrary rules that are being put in place by governors and mayors across the nation. All right. I, I guess one more quick uh, question, and then and then we'll let you go, officer. And by the way, we really do appreciate your time. Um, I guess the, this is another issue that I have that maybe you could help me with. What if every officer throughout the country did what you did, and every officer refused to make any arrest or cite anybody? If that was the case, then you can't police any of these businesses opening. You can't police any of these businesses not practicing social distancing, we would have the NHL, we would have the NBA, because just like a small business can't do certain things, obviously you can't have twenty or 30,000 people in an arena as well. So if you're not willing to police this, then what would stop every single business from opening up across the country? And wouldn't that be dangerous? That's up to individual business owners if that's what they choose to do or not. And then the other side of it is it's up to individual citizens to decide if they want to partake and go into a business or go into an arena. Like regardless of the danger levels and regardless of the validity of the virus, I don't have the authority to tell someone you can or cannot go into this store. You can or cannot go for a drive down the street. And so that's, that's the stance that I'm sticking with. And that's the stance that most law enforcement officers agree with. And if that's, you know, if officers around the country would stand up for people's liberties, I think that would be a great thing. All right. I, I mean, I mean, fair enough. I understand. Uh, I understand you making your points. And by the way, for the record, I, I will say it again. I do not support them uh, f firing you, you losing your job, especially when you have nothing on your record that would suggest otherwise. And especially I, after you followed all the protocol and, and listen, he knew the protocol with the social media video. And that was the reason for it. Now, if they tell you, officer, you have to be able to cite these people or arrest these people, and you say, no, I refuse to do so, and your superior tells you that after you get a suspension, then I would feel a little bit differently. But uh, at the uh -huh. same time, you're, you, know, you understand where I'm going with that? I mean, I don't support them firing you. I just don't, okay? But That's what if – Of course. Yeah, I mean, so let me ask you that. What if they said to you, officer, officer Anderson, you're a good cop. We want you to stay here. We've got to give you a two-week suspension. But I got to tell you, we can't have any more videos like this. And even though you disagree with what we're telling you to do, you still got to do it. You got you got to be able to arrest people if they refuse to abide by what the governor has said. Would you be willing to do that if they allowed you to come back to work? Listen, I'll go back to work for my agency and enforce the law in the capacity that I believe it should be enforced. But if I'm told at a future date you have to tell someone to put their mask on. No, it's, it's right back to this. And it has nothing to do with a future video. I have, I have no intentions of making a future video. I don't know what the future holds. But, no, no matter how this plays out, if I get terminated or if I'm welcome back on the force, you will not see me enforcing any type of tyrannical orders. Understood. Well, Officer, listen, I appreciate the fact that uh, you came on our show and you're stating your case. And uh, in all seriousness, regardless, I, I do hope you're back on the streets as a police officer. You sound like you're a smart guy. And uh, it sounds like you're a good cop. So, so we appreciate you coming on, officer. We wish you the best of luck. And uh, thank you for your thank time. You. Really appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, officer. Bye. Yep, thank you. Uh, that's Officer Greg Anderson uh, for the Port of Seattle Police. All right, I didn't want to belabor the point, but I'll talk to you about this. Here's where, here's, What's up, man? Here's where I think he's wrong. Um, and he seems like a really nice guy, by the way. But here's where I think he's wrong. 
I just asked him the question. If your superiors tell you you have to do something as a police officer, guess what? You have to do it. And if you if you wait, hold on. And if you don't do it, then you can't be a police well, officer. And, and he's saying that his superior is the Constitution of the United States. Well, that's absurd. It's not his police chief. That's absurd. It's not the mayor of Seattle. It's not Jay Inslee, the governor okay. of here's Washington. The, no, it's not absurd. Okay, here's the, the problem Constitution of the United States has okay. been. <laughs> it, it's the law of the land, Brian. Okay. It is not well, absurd. It's his interpretation. Of that the is his interpretation. That is an opinion. This is not and, about opinion. This know, is you, about doing what your boss. You talk telling about you to someone, you know, going into a salon. It's not like these salons. If for in order, in order for a salon to make money, there has to be mutual consent. Someone has to want to get their haircut or want to get their nail do, nails done. It is but a. It is a. Other it, is, it, it, is a it is. It is a. It is. It is a personal decision by not only the business but also the person right. going into the. Let business, me explain Brian. this. Let me explain this. Of course, it, I, under, this is not, of course on, I understand it, Brian. But I. I, I, would, I would argue that that hold you're on. you're at a much higher risk hold walking on. into a Vons okay, where there's on. 250 people okay. that are touching that are touching a lot of the same food in an enclosed okay. area again where the virus can spread. 13 to 29 right. feet if you you're sneeze or if it drops in the, right. or, or if you talk and it drops in the bottom of your All shoes, right. you're I would up. argue that's a much more dangerous place okay. than so, a salon where okay. it's one-on-one. So I already addressed that, and I'll, no, and no, I'll but address you didn't, it. Though. Hold on. You and, didn't I'll, and, I'll, and I'll address it again. Yes, I did. I did in the middle of that interview when you brought that up. There is zero comparison to people buying food in a supermarket, which, by the way, is allowed to be open, than to somebody who wants to get their nails done. That's number one. Number two. You're wrong, though. Uh, no, I'm not no, wrong. No, you are wrong. Number two. No, I I'm promise not. you you're wrong. No, I'm not. You cannot tell me right now that putting buying food is the same as somebody who wants to get a haircut. That's number one. That, that's your argument. Your argument is, is a necessity. I understand uh, okay, that. Hold I'm on, saying I'm not done yet. you are much more likely to be exposed right. to the virus in a supermarket right. than in a hold one-on-one on. Okay. situation. I'm not done yet. Hold especially on. in Nevada where, the vi- where there isn't a lot of virus right. here. you got to let me finish my point. The second point I was going to make is this isn't AIDS, okay? This isn't one person to one other person. The problem with coronavirus is this. If one person walks into a nail salon, okay, one person and has the virus or gets the virus, they can infect up to a 1,000 people. I mean, I, I, I've heard it from medical professionals within a few days. It's very possible if they're not practicing social distancing. You can laugh, but the bottom line is this. If that person would go to a gas station and is infected, asymptomatic, or anywhere, we're not talking about one person and, hey, if you're willing to get sick and you're willing to go out there, then it's on you. No, because if you get sick, you put a lot of other people at risk. That is what people forget about what this virus actually is. This is an AIDS. It's not like if you have unprotected sex with a, with a, uh, with a prostitute, you can get AIDS. I actually agree with, with that in, in the sense of this. If you're dumb enough to do that, that's on you. If you want to get HIV, that's on you. But coronavirus is very different. If you are irresponsible... You, you are putting a lot of other people at risk, just as if Actually, you go to a- Actually, right, the r not is two. What? The r not. The r not. the amount of people that are most likely to be infected by someone who, is, that, who has a virus is two. It's not a 1,000. Okay. Well, but, but if, if it was a 1,000, we would literally have to stay in our homes every single day, not go to the grocery store, wear hazmat suits. Like, that would never work. The, vi- the, the virus is not going – one person is not going to infect a 1,000 people. Okay. The r not of the virus – at this point, is considered to be 2.0, okay. which means the average the person the average person who gets the virus is most likely to infect two people. Okay. And I'm saying if you're in a city mm-hmm. like Las Vegas that has an 8 percent positive testing rate and only about we'll say 900 current active cases, not just talking about Las Vegas. Out of three, well, I'm saying I'm talking about Vegas now. Okay, but I'm not. We're talking about the entire country. That's not what we're talking about. And we're talking about salons all over the country. And this officer thinks, hold on, this officer thinks it's okay for anybody to take their own risk and go into a salon. And I disagree because, like you just said, this virus can spread to other innocent people who are not taking those risks. So I completely disagree with your premise and the officer's premise. My argument is that you are much more likely to get the virus in a place like a supermarket, like a Vons, like a Smiths, like a Target, like a Hy-Vee, than you are in a one-on-one situation, or even if there's five people in a salon. By that logic, right now, we've got four people in in your apartment right now. I mean, that's what this that's what the standard salon is going to have. It's not going to have ten plus on a consistent basis, but a supermarket. Or, I mean, for example, at Albertsons, they, they won't let more than 150 in at a time. That's still 150 people in an enclosed space, Brian. And, and they're all going to the same cashier. They're all, they're, they, may, they may or may not be touching the same food. I think you have a much higher chance of getting the virus inside a store than you do a salon. Okay, well, I'll end the segment by saying this. Police officers should not be giving us medical advice. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be as clear as day on that one. Uh, I don't want to get a director from a police officer.